Hello everyone, my name is Haster Hayes and welcome back to the disturbing true stories of the world. As always, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more interesting and troubling topics. Thanks guys. In January of 1959, there was a young 23-year-old Soviet who was leading multiple Soviet hikers through a strange and daring trail. Comprising of seven men and two females, all of which, or should I say most of which, were university students. Their goal was to hike out to a distant mountain pass and reach a small settlement in the middle of nowhere. It took about three months to locate all nine of their bodies. They were found around six miles away from their initial destination, in a forest about a mile away from their original campsite. Without their skis or coats, or any foul weather gear whatsoever in approximately negative 30 degree Fahrenheit weather. Two of them had fractured skulls and another two had their chests caved in. And yet another one even had her tongue missing. The Soviet government listed this as compelling natural causes for these hikers' ungodly undoing. And they abruptly closed the case not even a month later. Keep in mind, they haven't even found all the bodies yet. And this is what we know about this incident. Six skiers died of hyperthermia. The others died of mysterious causes. They all died separately. Two of them were found near a cedar tree near the remains of what was a bonfire, while three others were found in intervals of 100 feet from this cedar tree. I suppose that they were trying to make it to what was the bonfire. Meanwhile, four more were found in a ravine, maybe 240 meters or so away from this tree. The two that were on the tree had burned hands as if they had climbed through a fire or something of the sort. The four that were found in the ravine weren't found till May 4th, three months after this incident took place. Strangely enough, all of them were wearing different stages of clothing. In fact, some of them were wearing each other's clothing. What we believed happened in this case is that when one of them would die, they would take the other's clothing and then they would move on. In each stage, as each one of them died. Consistently, there were around eight or nine different sets of footprints that were found in the snow, which accounted for the skiers that were, in fact, along the group not suggesting that there was any other party's involvement with this specific case. There was in fact no sign of any struggle whatsoever or any other animal attacks that may have happened. There was actually no sign whatsoever of anything going wrong besides all of these hikers being dead. There was actually a snowstorm on the night of February 2nd, which was the date when it was determined that this situation had happened. We discovered this by reading into the diaries that these hikers had on them. Their initial campsite was settled on a slope that was initially called Dead Mountain by the natives. It's around 3,600 feet above sea level. All of these hikers were in their mid-twenties, except for one of them who was around his mid-thirties. All of them were actually experienced mountaineers when coming to this site. When they were getting to this particular site, they skied over frozen lakes and crossed many different treacherous areas to get to where they were discovered. Despite slow progress in getting to their initial destination, the last diary entries that were found at each of their campsites and on their persons, they appear to have been in high spirits, which is strange because of what had happened. Charmingly, they actually made a little news script about their adventure as if they intended to report it to the news, depicting excitement, really. Initially, five bodies were found, and at a initial legal request, they sent out an investigation to probably determine what was the cause of these people's deaths, of which case they determined that it was hypothermia, strangely enough. The deaths seemed straightforward at first, in fact, besides the fact that most of them were in different stages of undress in this negative 30 degree weather, which includes one of them being actually in their underwear in these weather conditions. They explain this by paradoxal undressing, which is when the body's temperature gets so low, they actually think they're getting hot, so they undress themselves in this negative 30 degree weather. This tends to happen with around 25% 
of hypothermia victims. Meanwhile, if we go back to the initial campsite, the skier's campsite was absurdly damaged. In fact, there was a cut going along the side of the tent. But it appeared as if the cut came from the inside, as if they were trying to escape the tent rapidly. And in fact, most of the gear was inside the tent still. The question raises is why they were dead from severe weather conditions if they had access to all their gear inside their comfy tent before they cut a hole in it. They appear to have left the tent out of their own violation and it appeared that they were in a hurry. Bizarrely enough, one of them actually left the tent with his camera instead of his own camping gear, which is strange enough as it is. Two of these victims sadly died, appearing to have been trying to walk back to their tent. One of these people had a cracked skull, but it was determined that it was the weather conditions that killed him, not the fracture of his skull, strangely enough. Not only that, but they don't know how he got the fracture in his skull. Meanwhile, no external damage was revealed on these bodies, which is strange enough because you would think you would have bruising on the site of where the fractured of the skull occurred. But that wasn't there, he just had a fractured skull. Meanwhile, we moved forward a few months, things got really strange when they discovered four other bodies in this ravine that was around 240 meters away. Two of the people who were in the ravine had fractured rib cages. Another one had a very large and major skull fracture. Investigators determined that the force of the skull fracture was that of a car crash. So their injuries were definitely not caused by another human being. And then once again, no soft tissue damage was ever discovered. It appeared as if the skiers' bodies were crushed under pressure, those of which who were found in the ravine, at least. In fact, another one of these victims that were found in the ravine was found to have been missing her tongue, but not just her tongue, her eyes as well, strangely enough. And that's when authorities believed that another party's involvement was there because of this one particular victim that was discovered. They were wondering who did this and why. Or maybe, in fact, did another skier from the hike do this? Did they gouge out this poor girl's eyes? Many mysteries arisen from this particular subject. But besides all this, there was absolutely no indication of any other hikers, not even tribal people, being nearby when this case occurred. And out of all of this, the strangest thing of all was the fact that most of their clothing and some parts of their bodies were enriched with radiation. Due to the absence of a guilty party, they ended up actually closing this case of May of 1959, only after a four short weeks after these bodies were actually discovered. And then, strangely enough, the files for this particular case was taken by the government, the Soviet government, and then they were classified. When the files finally became accessible in 1990s, post-Soviet era, they were actually missing bits and pieces of the original file, and we don't know what happened with it. Without any real public answers to what happened with this particular case, many freaky and strange questions and superstition aroused from this particular case. All manner of strange and interesting theories came about over the next 50 years for this case. But what makes the case the most popular is the fact that the Soviet government closed the case only after a month, leaving the most popular theories to the press. In fact, orange spears were seen in the sky the same night that these hikers had died. So many believe that it may have been caused from UFOs or some other supernatural thing that may have happened during that time period. These orange spears were sighted maybe around 50 miles away, give or take, from the scene itself. Some can explain these orange spears as intercontinental ballistic missiles that were being launched and tested during the time by the Soviets. There was in fact a Soviet nuclear testing ground that was near the area where these people had died. Some actually speculate that the reason why these skiers had radiation on themselves and all their clothing is because they heated and drank radioactive snow that may have had fallout, radioactive fallout in fact, in it. In fact, a 12-year-old eyewitness to the funeral of these skiers stated that their skin color was strangely very tan. And I don't know about you, but people in Russia are very 
kale. So it was found to be very strange. And of course, a whole bunch of other theories, like it being strange snowman or the Yeti, or some other strange creature that may have been out there lurking and took the opportunity to kill these hikers. Today, the scientific explanation for these nine people mysteriously dying under these strange circumstances has yet to be nailed down and probably won't ever be in this strange tale. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more interesting and troubling topics. Thanks guys.